Today, I've got all the information for the February patch for Battlefield 1. Now, DICE are calling it their winter update, and it is packed full of updates, changes, and fixes. Just so you know, though, this update is separate from the upcoming DLC, They Shall Not Pass. That's coming later on in March. This video is sponsored by EA. They gave me early access to all this information and some of the assets as well. So thank you to them. But right now, let's get into it. First up, let's look at some of the new progression features coming to the game. We've got ribbons, elite codices and new class ranks. Now we've spoken about some of these previously, but this time I've got some assets to show you so that you know what you'll be unlocking. Let's start with the ribbons. There will be 20 of them, and you can achieve them exactly the same way as you did in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. You simply play the game, and as you hit the requirements for each ribbon, it will flash up on the screen showing you achieved it. You get 300 XP for every ribbon you achieve, and there is no limit on them. They can be achieved as many times as you can achieve them. A quick little developer insight here, when the devs confirmed that ribbons were coming, even they said having played a test version of the game, and then going back to the current game, where there aren't any ribbons, they said that the game felt a little bit empty to them. So it's nice to know that the developers perhaps have the same feeling as us on this. And just to add, the current medal system in Battlefield 1 is being looked at by DICE. They understand that not many people really like it, in its current function, and they're looking at ways to improve it. No details yet, nothing coming in this patch, but they are fully aware that it's not very popular right now. Moving on to the Elite Codices now. On the screen are the new codex entries that you will be able to unlock. Now there are eight in total at the moment, all for different primary weapons. We've got the Automatico, the Hotchkiss M1909MG, the SMLE Mark III, the Masson MG, the M1907 Rifle, the Gewehr M95, the M97 Trench Shotgun, and the Selbstlader M1916. Now these are essentially weapon mastery tokens. It's a very similar system that was present in Battlefield 4, and here you need to achieve 500 kills with each of these weapons to unlock the Codex entry, and for your troubles, you'll land 25,000 XP as well. Important thing to note here, if you already have kills with these weapons, they won't count towards the new Codex entry, and you need to get 500 more kills than you already have with each of those eight weapons to get this new Codex. Now, more of these Elite Codices will be coming in the future. I asked the developers, and they said their intention is to add more and more with each update. Next thing on the list is the new class ranks. Now, all of the seven classes, Assault, Medic, Support, Scout, Cavalry, Pilot, and Tanker, will have their maximum class ranks bumped from 10 to 50, as I mentioned in a previous video. Now, more information today for you. DICE will be adding new items into the class rank grind so that you can unlock things as you progress forwards. These new items are on the screen for you now. We'll be able to unlock new dog tags specific to the class that we're playing, and we'll be able to unlock new class rank icons for our kill cards as well. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the ranks the dog tags will be unlocked at, but the class rank icons will unlock at rank 20 for bronze, 30 for silver, 40 for gold, and 50 for platinum. Now, these will be visible on the kill card in the kill cam. There's a screenshot on the screen for you here. It's this little icon on that bar. That will tell people what rank you are with that class when you kill them. Now, those class rank icons aren't all that impressive, but they are something to aim for. You only see them for a short time, and I'm not sure most people will be paying that much attention to the kill card to really notice them. As I say, it is something to unlock and achieve, and DICE will be adding more and more stuff to the progression system as time goes on. If these class icons don't tickle your fancy all that much, then I'm sure there's something coming that you'll prefer more. 
Moving on from the progression system, let's look at some of the other features that will be coming in this update, and we're going to start with the rental server program. Now, it's no secret that the community have been waiting for some of the fundamental features to be added to this system, and many people have been holding off from buying a server until those arrive. Well, today is a good day because the kick and ban features are coming in this update. Now, server admins will be able to kick or ban players using an in-game UI, which I've put on the screen for you now, and you can keep track of those players with a list as well. On top of that, server admins will have priority access to servers that they own. Whether that means a player is kicked, so an admin can join their full server, or simply they jump to the front of the queue to join next, I'm not 100% sure, but it is nice to see that feature added back in so admins can get into the game quickly and change things if people are misbehaving. Something else for the rental server program, map voting is now being added to Battlefield 1 too. This will be an option for rental servers and will be applied to some official servers as well. Again, I've got a screenshot on the screen for you now so you know what it looks like. And simply clicking one of the two options at the bottom of the victory screen will allow you to vote for which of the two randomly selected maps will come next. Hopefully, this means less Suez and more good maps like St. Quentin Scar and Amiens. Two more rental server options are coming in this update as well. The option to turn Behemoths on and off if you want to. I think a lot of people would like to do that. And the option to allow squad leader only spawning. Now this is an older setting from the days of Battlefield 2, where if you wanted to spawn right into the action, you could only do so on your squad leader. Now I assume DICE have added this as a legacy option for players who want to recreate that older feeling from older Battlefield games. Moving on, time to look at some general gameplay changes now, and it's been confirmed that gas grenades are getting nerfed. I know some people like the fact that gas grenades linger around for a long time, and everyone likes to say, it's World War I, there was gas everywhere. But some people don't like that, and they'd prefer a game that was fun over something that was realistic, and I'm in that latter group. Gas grenades have had their duration reduced, from 22 to 15 seconds. You still have two gas grenades on your soldier if you choose to spawn with them, and it will still cause your friendly players to get increased spread and recoil if they run into your gas cloud, but I think this is a step in the right direction. At some points, the amount of gas going off around the maps meant you were better off leaving your mask on permanently, and for me, that's just no fun. It reduces the gameplay down from something that could be very, very interesting with weapons with different engagement ranges, and suddenly it's all simply close quarters hit fire. For the time being, DICE have nerfed it in this patch, but let's see how it goes. DICE have also tweaked the suppression slightly in the game, so that it doesn't kick in as early on when someone starts firing at you. That gives you the chance to return your fire without being penalised with increased bullet spread and recoil the moment you pull the trigger, and potentially it might allow you to land a kill on the person who's firing at you. Suppression is something that DICE have played around with pretty much since it was added to the franchise back in Battlefield 3, and I have no doubt in my mind they will mess around with it again in Battlefield 1. They had a very good setup for it in Battlefield 4 once DICE LA managed to get their hands on it, so it's surprising they didn't adopt that method for Battlefield 1, but maybe it's just not as simple as I think it is porting across some values. As I mentioned in a previous video, the cavalry victim experience has been improved. You should no longer be killed by a cavalry unit who's using their saber from a greater distance than you'd expect to be able to be killed from. And some fixes have gone in for the elite classes as well, making sure their health regeneration is at the right speed and it stops them from spawning in with extra grenades. And finally, there are a couple of netcode fixes going into this update as well, although they are nowhere near as extensive as previous games, because the netcode in Battlefield 1 is just far better than it's ever been before. 
And that's the winter update. It launches tomorrow, February 14th, for all platforms, which means you can spend Valentine's Day with the love of your life, Battlefield 1. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. And while you're down there, if you could drop me a like, that would be greatly appreciated. You guys are awesome, but until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.